started with um, Beatrix Potter, uh, Peter Rabbit, the illustrated um, ink drawings with watercolor. So that's kind of where the idea I had. Um, and I went to an estate sale and found some napkins and the woman who had passed away actually had a ton of bunnies, which was a really strange coincidence. Um, so I took her napkins and I started to paint, hand paint different bunnies that I, my interpretation of Peter Rabbit and his friends. Um, so after that, then I just kind of wanted to do a whole entire table as if Peter Rabbit was inviting his friends to afternoon tea. So we've got a space for Benjamin Bunny and Jemima and Bobtail. Um, and then I did an invitation. And this is my um, illustration. So I've illustrated the flowers. And then we've got Peter Rabbit with that ink um, and watercolor. And then just to also include some little illustrated elements and calligraphy in the middle. Um, and then did an illustrated map of all of their different burrows. So this is kind of just something fun and interesting. And, uh, and an RSVP, kind of inspired by an old library card. So I wanted to pull that together with the whole book, Beatrix Potter <laughs> theme. Um, and then we've got a menu, it's a little bunny flower. And these are, the foods on here are something I thought maybe Peter Rabbit and his friends would eat, like gooseberry tarts and radish and endive salad or something like that. So. Well, I love rustic vintage, um, and I think this time of year I was getting, you know, getting into spring, and anything that I could use to that was old that I could make new again, or even new things I could make look old. On my centerpiece, I actually is an old porch post. I actually bought the porch post for a couple bucks at their restore in Charleston, and. Uh, this, I think, is some kind of yoke, maybe. <laughs> I just thought it was really neat because it had hooks, and you could anything with hooks is great because you can hang anything on it. And um, some uh, lanterns are a big thing now, and uh, I just thought film with flowers and candles. Candles are great because tablescapes need light, and uh, they were perfect to hang on the sides of it. So. The inspiration for our table is a little bit different than anything that we normally do. Um, we wanted to go with something a little bit darker and moodier, um, so we went with deep navy and greens and golds just to kind of give it like a moodier feel than um, the light airy feel that we usually do. Yeah, we're normally a little bit more of the uh, Magnolia Market, Joanna Gaines kind of uh, feel with a lot of the things that we do, but we love the velvet tones. Uh, that seems to be a really big thing right now. So we kind of went with that as our inspiration and rolled with it. One of our favorite pieces, actually, we thought this was an espresso cup. Apparently, it's a demi tasse, um, and this is actually we found this at a um, at the antique store, and we just loved it. It's just it's a fun little piece, and we just thought it really kind of flowed with kind of that elegant look that we were going for our table. So that's my favorite piece. I don't know if you have a favorite. I agree, and then I also love the pewter candlesticks as well. Those were a really great find um, from an antique store, and it just brings in a, a little bit of texture and a different element to the table against the gold. That's a good contrast. So our theme is kind of eclectic, but overall it's based around spring and everything coming to life nature and miniature gardening. So the tablescape is uh, actually lined um, with a live garland that has a combination of magnolia leaves that are grown on a farm in Florida. One of my vendors that I use for wreaths and whatnot put this together for me, special for this occasion, and she intertwined it with North Carolina uh, greenery uh, in the fir evergreen uh, variety and so you can actually smell it in the room here uh, while we're talking and then underneath the table we have a combination of dried silk um, also even paper flowers <music> 